The Europa League final between Villarreal from Spain and Manchester United from England was played in Dansk on Wednesday night. After 120 minutes and a long penalty shootout, the Spanish side emerged victorious, winning their first ever European trophy, while this was the fourth time that manager Unai Emery has won this competition, with three previous wins at Seville. On the other hand, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's team were unable to put the finishing touch on what would have been a successful season, but is now ultimately tinged with disappointment after coming so close. This tactical analysis will explain both teams' tactics and strategy used in the match. The analysis was written by Mac over on the Total Football Analysis website and the link to the article will be in the description but for now we're just going to get stuck right into things. Villarreal lined up in their usual 4-4-2 formation, with only one change from their final La Liga game of the season, as Juan Foyth returned from injury to replace Mario Gaspar at right back. Manchester United also played with a strong team in a 4-2-3-1. One of the biggest talking points was the involvement of Mason Greenwood from the start, as Paul Pogba dropped into midfield in place of Fred. Greenwood, Bruno Fernandes, Marcus Rashford and Edison Cavani formed a threatening front four, while David De Gea started in goal in what may turn out to be his final appearance for the club. United had 59% possession but failed to take advantage of this to create clear-cut opportunities. They had only created chances worth 0.1 xG in the first 15 minutes and their xG total for the match after 120 minutes was at 1.45, which is a reflection of their struggle to break down Villarreal's defensive block. This is not an isolated incident, as United have had problems against sides that sit deep and defend all season. Unai Emery's tactics may not have been pretty to watch, but they were effective at nullifying United's creative threat, especially Bruno Fernandes. The first image shows Villarreal's mid-block in a 4-1-3-2 shape. The yellow submarine's initial 4-4-2 formation had only two midfielders and could easily be overloaded, so Emery made his strikers sit deep and closer to the midfield line, with two wingers also coming in field and staying narrow, to ensure that Villarreal's midfield pivot was not pulled out of position. The aim of this shape was to keep Fernandes under check, with one of the two central midfielders staying deep to close off space and passing lanes for the Portuguese international. This also meant that Villarreal forced United wide and they successfully clogged the central zones. Manchester United were unable to take advantage of the space on the flanks and their attack was quite ineffective throughout this match. Despite Villarreal sitting back in a deep block for the first 20 minutes of the game, United barely created any chances with all the possession that they were able to have. Fernandez's movement was also an issue. The 26-year-old kept making moves from in to out to try and receive possession behind the opposition fullback. However, these ones were usually not timed well and additionally, this took away from any central presence that Man United had in the half spaces. The highlighted space in the image shows how United vacated the central space completely rather than trying to play quick passing moves through that area to open Villarreal up. United did recognise this problem around 15 minutes or so, with United then becoming more aggressive in their positioning. The fullbacks moved higher, allowing Rashford and Greenwood to come in field, while Fernandes stayed central, almost akin to a central striker, to create a 2 vs 2 with the Villarreal centre backs. We can see how Rashford is now in the half space, offering himself as a passing option for Victor Lindelof, with Shaw outside on the overlap as Foyth is drawn inwards towards Rashford. However, conceding a goal seemed to knock the wind out of Manchester United as they lost their structure and became slightly chaotic. The image shows how the first and second lines of the team are completely separated, with very little chance of connection and creativity between the lines. There was no occupation of space between the Villarreal lines and United once again tried to go wide out of the block rather than continuing to try and manipulate the Villarreal players out of the block. Villarreal were committed to defending in this game. When United's wide threat grew as the match developed, Emery's wingers defended even deeper, forming a back six at times. Villarreal's wide men did a lot of hard work to track the runs of the fullbacks and defend the wide spaces with the Villarreal fullbacks picking up the wingers. This prevented United from being able to isolate the opposition fullbacks and create two versus one overloads. We can see Villarreal's compact shape in the image. It was almost a 6-3-1 shape and virtually no room for Manchester United to progress centrally. Here is United's top passing links and average position of players. Note how the strongest passing links are on the outside, while Cavani was quite isolated and unable to participate in the build-up. In the second half, 
United looked better on some occasions as Solskjaer tried to attack through the central zone. The centre-backs were encouraged to bring the ball out more often and they tried to play more vertical passes, only looking to release the wider options closer to the penalty area. However, the Red Devils were still a little conservative as Pogba and McTominay stayed deeper to guard against the counter-attack. One of them could have moved upfield to create another vertical passing option. United's PPDA of 6.27 in this match was nearly half of their season average of 12.42, which shows how their press was far more intense than usual. They were able to prevent Villarreal's passing sequences from developing, and the Yellow Submarines only made 430 passes in this match, even after extra time, which is lower than their season average of 508 passes per 90 minutes, and shows United's pressing success. Emery's team could hardly play out from the back and ended up going long far more than usual with the 12.79 share of long passes being higher than the season's average of 8.19%. United's pressing was in a 4-2-3-1 shape. They usually had four players very high to the press while the defensive midfielders stayed deep to protect the centre-backs. These were the key elements of United's press, preventing a switch, covering the centre and using side trap to recover possession. Cavani pressed the centre-backs laterally to prevent the switch of play. Because of this, Villarreal's wide 4-2 shape in the build-up was unable to stretch United. We can see the shape in the image, but with Cavani and another player blocking a switch and Rambasaka having moved upfield to press aggressively, they could not play out and were often forced to hit the ball long. The Manchester United fullbacks pressed extremely high, with the wingers moving infield to cover the half spaces, while the ball side central midfielder would also track the opposing midfielder if he moved wide to receive. This approach made it extremely difficult for Villarreal to play forward passes. We can see the same pressing setup from United in this image as well. Narrow wingers with the fullback pressing aggressively. However, fatigue meant that the pressing intensity was lower in the second half and there was more space to exploit here as well. Here, wan is late to reach the left back while Pogba does not track the wingers run from inside to out in the same aggressive manner that we saw from McTominay earlier. Thus, Villarreal were able to get behind the United fullbacks and advance up the pitch. Villarreal's biggest threat came from set pieces and we have analysed Gerard Moreno's goal here. Villarreal only used four players to stretch the defence, while United's initial setup already had big gaps on the far side, especially between Lindelof and Bailly. To create space to run into that channel, Moreno started his run deep so no one was chasing behind him. When the ball was delivered, Moreno arrived earlier than Lindelof, while Raul Albiol blocked Bailly, creating the gap for Moreno to run into and score. Given the fatigue that inevitably set in, it was vital for the managers to make changes to get fresh legs onto the pitch. Emery reacted to this far earlier than Solskjaer, making changes that helped decide and improve their defensive performance. The yellow submarines had lost their rhythm a bit, taking too much time to move the ball around, which allowed United to press and close off passing options. For example, here, Foyf was unable to get out of the side trap as the team was moving the ball too slowly. When he received the ball, United had already closed down all available passing options and he eventually lost the ball in a dangerous area as a result. However, Emery noticed this and brought in Mario Gaspar on for Foyf, who was immediately able to cope much better with the United press, as well as with Rashford running at him. While on penalties, especially after a man from shootout like the one on this game is always unlucky, Solskjaer ultimately did not do enough to force an issue. This analysis has shown where Manchester United's problems were in this match and there was a lot of work to be done both on the training ground and in the transfer market in the summer if the Red Devils are to end their four year long trophy drought next season. Of course, Villarreal and Emery deserve a lot of credit for sticking to their approach and making it difficult for United to create opportunities in this match. But that there wraps up this match analysis written by Mac on the Total Football Analysis website. Make sure you check that out. But also, if you are enjoying this type of content, make sure you hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit the like button and leave a comment if you have any recommendations. My name is RDF. It's been a pleasure. I will speak to you guys soon. Peace out and stay safe.